last couple of years driving this little patch here, I've seen a lot of big bucks sign back here. But it's always like we're just after the big bucks. We kill a doe or two or something, but not see any big bucks. So I'm thinking the timing is off when we gun hunt this, but the sign I was seeing back here was telling me I should get in here with a bow. And that's one of the great things about gun deer drives, is I don't take the gun as serious as the bow. I kind of look at that as a great time to scout some areas. I go in and I see the fresh sign right in season. And this is always tore up with big buck sign. And I wanted to come to this particular spot because right there in that little tree, I can see the ball sack of the buck that Eric shot. He shot a little buck when it came running out of that bedding area. Yeah, Oh, I see a rack on it. That's a nice line there, though. Oh my! Look at look at the mass on this thing. Who got it? Look at the spread. Everybody. It's questionable. <laughs> I shot him twice, and then Cliff shot him. He was laying up in here. And it seemed like the bedding started right over in there. So I kind of want to follow that trail back. But I'm walking over there to scout that, and I look right here, and here is a giant rub. I don't know if you see that, but it's not on a huge tree, but that is waist high, and these are some pretty big branches that are busted off on here. And you can see it was rubbed down here, and even that's a fairly high rub. This one, that's a big buck did that. Last year when I was driving this for the guys, I found a nice buck dead back here too. When you go through these cattails and stuff, and it's all water and stuff, it's important to hit these little islands because that's where they bed. They lay up on these islands. Oh, look at that rub. That's a high rub. You can even see that. There's another bed there. Fresh tracks. There's another bed up ahead of us. We gotta be kicking some deer past those guys for sure. Poopies. Not boobies. Another rub. Oh, look! Dead buck. Holy crap, I just about stepped on this guy. Nine pointer, look at that. <laughs> Jeez, right in the beds. It was to show you. You find those deadheads, you find good bedding. This is obviously a really good buck bedding spot. Interesting. Looks like it's been here a couple years. Meaning nobody's getting back here. So I kind of know where that bedding area is and it looked like the trails came out this way, but I didn't come over here. So now I want to kind of look. Now even right here, looking, I see a whole bunch of big historical rubs. I mean, I want to get over by where that trail is. But man, look at this. Look at that rub there, holy cow. You see that? And this one, oh my. Can you see how high that is? Can you see that on me? Holy crap. And that one over there, that's a chest high rub. I mean, that's a normal height rub. This, my gosh, that was a big buck. Look at this. That is up to my belly, over my belly. It's at the bottom of my chest. To the height on that, wow. So something good is going on. He's got a rub line going right through here. So we're kind of going to have to look at this trail too. Because that rub was on here too. But I like that trail up there. So let's go up there and take a look. Look at this historical rub from years ago. The tree's broken over. These shrub, trees got a whole bunch of old scarring on them. There's something big box living in here. This is kind of just one of those little overlooked patches too. So, I mean, look at the old rubs here from years past. I can see a trail going in there. So I'm thinking this is the trail. But I really came within mind to check that trail, but I really hadn't had the time to kind of look in here. There's a couple heavy runways here too. Let's take a look at this. Then we'll look at that. <laughs> You can see a good rub there, too. Hmm. 
Here's where Eric hung, hung his uh, his gonads, and uh, that buck came trotting out on this trail right here. You can see the coyote poop where it was field dressed. Yeah, there's the gut pile, just the remnants of it here. Here's the trail. This is the trail I wanted to look at, but I think I'm going to end up over there. Yeah, here's a rub. Another rub. These are little rubs, though, next to the ones over there. There's a historical rub. Branches broke. Deer poop. Lots of deer tracks on the trail still. Here's a fork in the trail, and this goes over to the area with the big rubs. But I have to think they're coming through that stuff, you know? Man. Hey, look at this. There's another tree broken off over there. Big historical rubs over here. These, these ones are historical but big. And this trail, right to those rubs. So it all comes together here. So this is kind of the area I have to be. Look at this trail heavy here. Let me get in there and look around and see if we can find exactly where they're better than how they're coming out of here. The historical rub right there. This trail has a lot of tracks on it. Going right back into that cave. Kind of see where that grass hill comes down. I mean, we're standing 50 yards over there. All those trails and tracks coming to here, they split off that way and through here. This isn't a bad area, but it's kind of thick because I think they're bedding right in there. They'd probably get to right here. I can see a giant old rub there. If a guy could get to this tree here, I mean, you'd probably be really close to the bedding. But man, you'd have to break off a lot of these dead branches, so you'd have to do it now. But right there, real low. That's a thought. I'm going to keep that in mind, but I'm going to keep looking. See if I can't come up with something better. Because getting right into this spot would be a little harsh. Now there's a rub from early season last year. There's a rub from early season last year. Here's the fork. Right here. Looks like a lot of deer are coming out of both. Right here looks like a good trail. Ooh, look at this. Look at the rub on that tree. That's as big around as I am. And right there, look at this. Oh geez, that's a big tree. And this is our boy, way up here. Looks like multiple bucks rubbed this. But that's, that's high again. Right up in here. There's tracks coming in from over there too, so a guy has to be back here. The old rubber there. And that, uh, that skeleton of a buck I found in a bed only about 50 or 60 yards that way, right off of this. So this isn't a bad spot. This tree is perfect. A guy could get a stand in there. It's just too, it needs to be back there. 10 yards would make all the difference in the world. Yeah, here's a here's the first bed right here. That is pretty close though. That is uh, 25 or 30 yards. Yeah, there's more beds all around. So there's a lot of beds right here. Here's that heavy trail that comes up to the tree right here. Look at that. Yeah, I don't know. I might. This actually goes up to those big rubs we just looked at. You got all these beds here. I would say we probably have to get a little further in in that tree. This is where they're coming from, right in here. Yeah, I see another bed over there with poop in it. There's a bed in that hole there. This is just all beds right here, so. Yeah, you can see they're coming out of these bushes and stuff too. Probably right underneath this tree. Yeah. See Nick from antlers here and here. 
not much, a little bit. They're probably laying right there too. Because literally any place out here where you don't see grass like that, something matted that down. So I just want to take a look around this bend here. It's right over there is where I found that buck, that dead buck. Look at some of that and just make sure that that's my spot. I think it is right, right where those pine trees are, so where I think I gotta be. See how you can't get real high? If I get real high, they'd be able to see you out here. If they're standing here, they'd see you. They might not see you if you're laying down, but they hear one noise and they stand up and you're right there. So you gotta be real low in the tree. Here we got a land point coming out. There should be some beds right here. Where the ground tapers down, sure enough, it's pounded. Look at that, it's really pounded, holy cow. Yeah, this is matted right to the ground. You can see old poop there. There's a fresher bed right there, it's still moist. There's a bed. But that is matted down like crazy right there. I would say early season, this is probably full of deer. So we looked at this bedding coming around here. There's our trees over there. And you see there's more going over here, which I know because I found that dead buck right over here. And um, we're gonna look at that. But coming around to here, this is the back side, and this goes up and you see a trail there, a trail here, a trail here. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to get a, a setup right in here too, if I can find a spot that ain't too thick because then I have both sides covered no matter which way they're going. Oh, that's almost over the boot. That'll keep some people out of here. <laughs> There's a deer hair floating. Look at how high I went on there. See how high the water went? Mucks come up to there, gum leaves go up to here. That extra four inches has saved me many a time. Here's some more beds here. There's an old historical rub, heavy trail going back over to, the, to our setup spot. You see a bed here, you see a bed in that hole. Yeah, this is a heavy trail going over there. Nice. Just following this little land bridge right out over there. Here's another joining trail coming in. Going right to our tree. So now when I look out over this stuff, what I see is a couple of trees here and here, and a little patch of trees over here. I'm willing to bet there's beds under those. Look at this trail here, and there's some heavy rub in there, broken branches and stuff. And this goes right up onto that hillside too, so we need to look at that hillside next for setup up there, on that ridge, and set up back here. So I would think right underneath these trees in here, and there's a heavy trail going into them. Good dogwood, and look at how much the dogwood is, is eaten. See that? All this dogwood has been eaten everywhere. Now, here's a bed here. Fill in with water right now. This water will go down a little bit, but when it does, the muck will get looser and you'll sink more because right now there's ice underneath it. So you're not sinking as bad. Here's the tree I thought there'd be a good bed under. Let's go take a look. Huh. Something's been bedding right here in the open. Probably when the grass is standing up a little more. But you can see that just matted down hard. 
A lot of trails can, oh yeah, that bed is just crazy. Look at that, it's just matted to the ground. Wow. Look at that. That bed got used a lot. I mean, that should look just like this stuff. That is just worn to the ground. And you can see satellite beds on, around it all over the place. That's pretty good. Very interesting. I think now I gotta get that tree down pat where I want it. And once I have that figured out, I'm gonna figure out something over here. Then we're good in this spot. Holy cow, look at these beds are worn to the ground. Look at this. That is just worn out. That trail is massively heavy too. I would have to say there's a time period when there's giant bucks living in here. I'm getting this pretty figured out. I'm thinking this is going to be, you know, early season, but probably for sure mid to late October based on the amount of rubs and the, and the rut sign. There's some scrapes along there, there's some rubs and stuff. But by the time gun season comes along, they're not in here. <laughs> that extra four inches is paying off. That literally is a real good selling point because literally this is like three to four inches higher than my tide weeds or my mucks were and there's so many times when the water was just deeper than those it seems to like not get over this level much but it gets over the other level a lot and this is floating bog here so I could poke through and be careful I don't know if the camera picks that up but this is just you feel it floating I'm shaking around you notice the one spot where I found that big giant dead buck I can't get to without getting soaked. I don't think that's a coincidence. I came back to finish scouting this. If you look over here at these uh, tamarack trees there in the middle of the cattails, that's where my tree stand is going to be. That's where my, my main spot is. All those beds we're looking at were back in here and stuff. I came in here uh, to finish this up. I didn't get a spot set up on that end. This is a little tiny area. It's uh about 20 acres um, not much for trees in here there's a little point over here uh, I got an idea that that point gets a little more pressure than over here but uh, there's a parking lot um, right behind me here that is within uh, within a hundred yards of both spots I'm looking at within a hundred yards of the bedding and nobody really comes over here the parking lot leads them out into some public and this just doesn't even look like it's part of the public and it's this little 20 acre spot. Um, I'm going over here to set up another spot off this point and as I'm walking over there I came up to this uh, tree here because I saw this lone tree in the cattails, this lone bush. thought maybe there'd be some bedding here and there is and I, I kind of figured there would be. Um, but look what I see. That uh, tree there is ripped up really high. That's like chest high. And my tree is literally 75 yards from here, from this bed. And there's a heavy trail going right to it. And several trails come out of those beds over there. I mean, this is looking pretty good. It's really just a matter of getting the timing down of when the bucks are here. But uh, there's a bed here and a bed up there when this fills in with water. The bed up there, you can see where it's kind of matted down. But you can see that this is matted down at one point too. And uh, that is, uh, I don't know if you can see that, that's chest high. Chest high to the center. Nothing down below. All the little branches broken off up in here. It was definitely a good buck. Yeah, here's an old rub from a small buck. Look at the height difference. All right, we're gonna get to that point over there and check that out. If you look at this on a map, all 
all these trails spider to this spot. And, you know, you'd be able to see this on an aerial. I mean, these trails are pretty heavy through here. So at some point in time, there's a lot of deer in here. I mean, look at this, the branches are all broke from being trampled by deer. Trails going in every direction. All this dogwood is chewed up. All the ends are bitten off earlier in the year. So really looking at this, the road's beside me here. There's an exit going this way and an exit going that way. And pretty much without going right into danger, that's the only way he's in and out of here. So this is a pretty good spot to um, really hunt. There's two ways in and out. A guy can hunt both ends in two days and cover this if there's a deer in here. So all that bedding is all out in here like this. This is that point coming up out of the water going up a little narrow ridge. Pretty tight down here at the bottom with not much for trees. All the only big trees are ash and they're dead. So it's gotten thick at ground level. But you see several trails meeting here and going up the ridge. And I'm sure there's a couple that come from over there because there's some good bedding over there. What we want to do is get up here where it all kind of comes together and see if we can find a setup. Some place where we can get a shot off. This is the top of the ridge. Everything should come together right here, I would think. And sure enough, here's a beet trail. That looks more like a buck trail. Nice and open for them. There's big piles of poop on it. That's some big poop. This would be the ideal spot if I could find a place to set up. So, if that cedar was just downhill a little bit, that'd be perfect. That tree would be okay, it's, but it's a dead ash and it looks like it's in pretty bad shape. Right here's where I'd like to be able to hit. I could get up there or over here to one of these trees, but I'd have to clip a couple branches. Oh, there's a huge rub over there. Oh, Let's just look around a little bit and see if I can find something up the trail or something. Here's another trail coming down from the bottom beds right into here. That's uh, waist high. Branches are all broken off up above it. Here's a pretty big branch busted off. Lots of marks from tracks. Uh, here's a tree rubbed up kind of high. Right there, a smaller tree, but up high and a lot of broken branches on it. Another broken tree, another broken tree. Ooh, look at that old historical rub. That's pretty big. And there's a nice rub. Historical. There's a real high historical one. There's a high historical one here. But well, there's a really big rub over here. Look at that. Holy crap. That's our boy right there. Another one in the background. The historical down there. Let's take a look at these ones. So that's the center of that rub is chest high. And I'm six foot two. There's marks here, marks here. Look at this stuff. All these branches broken off here. Tine marks. I'm six foot two. This is uh, pretty cool. And there's another one right there that is just like this one. You can see the historical rub down there, and then the big, big one up higher. None of these trees are set up, and it doesn't look like anybody's getting back here. All right, the spot I was just looking at is just over there. You can kind of see the cedar tree through the brush. I got to the next spot where it's open enough to shoot, right here. And I'm thinking on a west wind I can get in one of these trees. Shouldn't be too hard. I'm actually thinking I might be able to get up into this tree here and be able to get a shot through here. I don't think that's too bad of an option. So I think this is gonna be my spot, or if I get the right spot in that tree, I can hit this. And this, all the trails come together here. You can see this beat from being used over the years. 
and the trails are starting to split off here and go up and down the hills so I don't want to get too much further back I think this is about it so now I've got two spots and then this uh, little tiny I don't know, 15 or 20 acre uh, brush pile that's overlooked I really can't find any hunter sign in here I uh, did find shotgun shells that are they look like they're every one of them I found was probably like 20 or 30 years old the uh, metal parts rusted off and so somebody used to come in here at one point in time and back in those days this is probably more grass and it's probably they're probably chasing pheasants around I don't think too many people are in here deer hunting honestly look at this branch here this is actually uh, a rub tree I didn't even notice that see them broken and off there are lays definitely some big bucks in here in pre-rut that's what the signs telling me see a couple old scrapes a lot of rubs and every time we uh, we hunt this during gun season we see a lot of does in here so I have to think pre-rut the bucks are in here so uh, we got the time frame we got the uh, exit out of both sides of the uh, bedding and now it's just a matter of the right winds and hunt it at the right time so here's my tree right behind this cedar tree there's an opening right up there the tree will give me cover from deer coming from that way and this little opening up here I got an open shot right to it which is where that tree is broken off from rubbing and there was two trails down here not as well used as up there one down there and one right here and I block this one because it goes right underneath the tree and it does have uh, tracks on it as you can see coming under there um, but that one's more heavily used and so is that one but with a south wind I'd be able to shoot that trail or this trail um, I would expect deer on that trail but you never know there is some sign down here I had to laugh when I came down here and looked at uh, the tree I blocked this little opening so that they can't walk through here and I noticed a couple of historical rubs on that giant tree so I can go right up the back side of this tree and get the stand on in a way that I can shoot over and I should still be able to shoot this trail behind me both of them less than 10 yards with really good concealment this is a good spot and I'm glad I kicked back a little bit instead of looking for a setup up further I finally found something that's I think this is good enough and I think they'll get this far so we got this pretty much covered two setups and I got this little area covered where I know it's holding big bucks and I, I would think that anything big in there is coming by one of these two spots I could literally hunt that one and then the next day hunt this one or the next time I got the right wind I mean the one over on that side would probably be more for a north wind and this would be more for a south wind over here so when you see all these scrapes and all this rubbing that really locks it in that this is pre-rut when we come in here and gun hunt this I think we're in here just after the bucks leave we need to be in here about two or three weeks earlier than that and then we'll get on to these guys that are making these scrapes making these rubs coming in here after all the does that are hanging out in here